Laughter may be the best medicine, but ask any scientist and they will arguably suggest a competitor. Exercise. It helps maintain strong bones, muscles and blood vessels. It boosts immunity. It reduces the risk of cancer and heart disease. It prolongs life spans. Moving the body is also good for the mind. Yet the idea of exercising is often met with grunts. According to the United Nations, at least 30% people do not exercise enough the world over and this can be deadly. Physical inactivity is the fourth leading risk factor for mortality. More than 3 million people die every year because they do not exercise enough. Physical inactivity is a global problem. But what if there were a magic pill to help mitigate all of this? According to scientists, there may be one. An exercise pill, and I'm not making this up, think of exercise pills as exercise mimetics. They can come in the form of capsules or injections. Ideally, they could replicate the benefits of exercise. It may sound far-fetched, but this is not a new concept. From Norway to Japan, scientists have spent years trying to design exercise pills. Now they seem to be getting close. And I'll tell you why. A team of American scientists has created new compounds. These are proteins. They can regulate the impact of exercise in muscles. They can mimic the physical boost of a workout, though so far only in rodents. These compounds were tested on mice, and they improved muscle function, fitness, and endurance. The goal is to bring these benefits to humans now, but for that, more testing is required, first in other animals and then in humans. But this is not the only step forward. Several scientists are studying, studying similar compounds and some are trying to turn normal fat cells into energy burning fat cells. Others plan to reduce excess sugar in blood. So there are different ideas, but the aim is singular. For a pill to stimulate the benefits of exercise. But let's go back to the basics for a minute. What is the point of an exercise pill? Is it to release, release you from the obligation of hitting the gym, which could be a byproduct, but it's not the goal. These drugs are not meant for the lazy or the time poor. The aim is to give the benefits of exercise to people who are not able to do it. You see, not everyone can exercise, like the elderly, people with muscle wasting diseases or movement disorders, post-surgical patients or obese patients, exercise pills could greatly benefit them. They could be life-changing. But there are significant challenges here. These drugs have the potential for abuse. Athletes might want, want them to cheat the system. The sedentary might use them for an easy way out or for cosmetic purposes. We are seeing this with anti-obesity drugs. They're the new big thing. Ozempic and Vigovi have become household names, so much so that there is a regular shortage of the drugs for patients who actually need them. And there is another lesson here. Drugs are valuable tools in the fight against the obesity epidemic, but they come with a lot of side effects. Some are long-term and potentially life-threatening. No doubt, anti-obesity drugs can save lives, but they're also a multi-pronged problem for the society. Scientists fear that this will be the case with exercise pills as well. So they're acting cautiously. They're trying to minimize dangerous side effects. Let's say scientists are successful in doing so. In that case, will drugs take the place of actual exercise? It may be tough. At the end of the day, exercise pills will artificially stimulate the human body. It, will it is unlikely that they will replicate the full benefits of exercise. In all probability, a few health targets will be chosen. And hopefully exercise pills will be successful in meeting them. But for now, researchers are focusing on just two things, making pills that work on humans and ensuring that they are safe. If evidence checks both these boxes, there is a high chance exercise pills could be the blockbuster drugs of the future.